Tenant Healthcare earned three cents a share in the third quarter, beating analyst estimates. The company also raised its guidance for fiscal year 2009. Is a turnaround on track? CEO Trevor Fetter joins us now from our Dallas bureau to break down those numbers and an outlook. Welcome, Mr. Fetter. Thanks for having me. So Tenant's same hospital total admissions only rose one-tenth of one percent in the quarter. So how did Tenant manage to report an adjusted profit when analysts were expecting a loss? Uh, it's a great question, and it's very simple. We uh, First of all, if we just start with patient volumes, they were relatively flat in the quarter. And in light of what's happening in the overall economy, starting with relatively flat volumes is a very good thing. Our outpatient volumes were actually up, so that helped contribute to growth. Overall, we had revenue growth that was around 5%, which is actually a very strong number. So that's a combination of pricing as well as the mix of services that we're providing in our hospitals. And then where we really shown this quarter was in, out, in uh, cost control. So our cost control was excellent. We generated very strong cash flow. And all of that contributed to some uh, very positive results. Our adjusted EBITDA was up 50% year over year. It's the second quarter in which we've had growth of that magnitude. And uh, free cash flow was positive, about $140 million. And you raised your 2009 outlook for many of these reasons, I'm sure, by $25 million to a range of $925 to $975 million. So where specifically will that additional $25 million come from? Well, we expect it to come from a combination of all of those trends that I just uh, spoke well, about. Uh, you know, in spite of this weak economy, we are having a very strong year. We're being very tight on costs. The weak economy is actually helping us a bit in containing employee turnover, which had been, you know, a real costly uh, problem for us. And we've had benefits in other areas as well, like reductions in malpractice expense. So all of these trends are things that we expect to continue into the fourth quarter, and that led us to increase the outlook for the year. Mr. Fetter, Tenet had a same hospital bad debt ratio of 8.5% of net revenues in the third quarter. That was up from 7.4% in the prior quarter. What specifically are you going to do to turn this around? Well, this is a very persistent problem, this bad debt issue. And let me just speak a little bit about why it's so important that we enact some form of, of health reform in the country. Our bad debt expense is driven largely by individuals. And these are individuals either that have insurance, but they owe quite a lot of the, you know, pay, the portion of the bill personally, and they don't pay or patients who are uninsured. The, all of those numbers have been growing. That's been contributing to that high bad debt number. Uh, we don't have a problem collecting from managed care companies or the government and those sources of revenue. But when it comes to individuals, it's a very persistent problem, and the economy has made that worse. Mr. Feder, do you think then that national health care reform with a public option might be an answer here? Well, let's separate that a little bit. Let me speak first about health reform and then a little bit about the public option. I think health reform is very important. We have a very high rate and number of uninsured people in this country. It, it really is a national disgrace. It's something that uh, doesn't exist in many other of our peer countries in the industrialized world. So we need to get these people covered with insurance. Now, the public option, which is very misunderstood, is one concept that is being floated within Congress that would literally be a public plan that would be an option, one of many. I don't mean to diminish the importance of this, but it's a another government program. I don't feel that we need a government program for the individual market. I think that that is already being served by the private sector and people uh, have insurance through their jobs. That's an important form of insurance coverage. Uh, but there are many different variations this public option could take, some of them more threatening than others. Mr. Fetter, back to the balance sheet and this issue of the bad debt. It's there. We've discussed the reasons why. But you do have cash and cash equivalents, which rose to $224 million in the quarter, or by $224 million to $731 million. Again, this is cash and cash equivalents. About 30 seconds here. Can you use some of that cash to manage the debt? Well, it's a, it's a very strong cash position. It's a high level of liquidity. Obviously, we could turn around and use it to reduce debt. It actually acts as an offset against the debt now on the, uh, on the balance sheet. And I think that you know, companies generally right now are holding a little higher cash reserves than they have in the past. I think the financial crisis of a year ago uh, really caused all of us to be a little bit more risk averse. Uh, the real story with us and our balance sheet is that we've reduced the level of leverage okay. by over two turns uh, of EBITDA. So we've, we've done a very good job this year in okay. reducing leverage and the risk we've profile of the balance sheet. Got to leave it there. Trevor Fetter, CEO of Tenant Great. Healthcare. Thanks for your time today.